a decapitated model collection being prepared for the new series of Spitting Image. This is a revolutionary time for television comedy, with the heads of the famous falling indiscriminately into the satirical tumbrel, and collectively it can be a fairly unlovely sight. Individually, one just has to grin and bear it. The Spitting Image production line starts with an artist at the drawing board. In this instance, a larger-than-life subject, the country singer Dolly Parton, drawn in pen and ink and crayon. The artist invariably works off photographs. Jimmy Greaves, once of Spurs and now a TV oracle. Peter Walker, the energy secretary, in clay. His profile doesn't exactly lend itself to a flattering camera angle. Some characters aren't easily recognisable. So who's the glamorous lady you're working on here? Uh, this is Liz Taylor. <laughs> She'd be delighted, wouldn't she? I wouldn't have thought so. She's not been uh, a character before then. She's a new one, Liz Taylor, is That's she? That's right, yeah. She's going to be eating things. Rather cruel in view of the fact she's just been on the strict diet. Oh, really? Well, I don't know. I'm not a script writer. I'm just a model. Next stop, the mould room, where the same basic methods of casting are used as once gave rise to portraits of the great and good in bronze. Now they're less flattering and the material is latex foam. Elsewhere, they devote their time to bringing the puppets to life. In this case, the physical idiosyncrasies of the Bishop of Durham. At this stage, the overall sort of objective is to get the mechanics in, which is essentially eye mechanics, and uh, get them installed inside the head, so allowing the hand to still operate the mouth area, which is kind of main expressive aspect. And he's got rather different eye mechanics from the usual, hasn't he? Well, um, yes, it's a kind of a singular rotational thing, which was designed by our mechanic. A roving and, uh, eye. Yeah. It's what the bishop himself makes of this ecclesiastical cyclop isn't known yet. And the same goes for Lord Whitelaw, who's been caricatured from the waist up. And then you're working on Dolly Parton as well. Yes, she's uh, full-bodied like this one. Apologies <laughs> in different places. Indeed, yes. Don't know how I'm going to cope with that one until I get it. <laughs> Here, the finishing touches of his facial are being applied to Labour leader Neil Kinnock a casual spray of random freckles and some judicious eyeliner. And you're having some problems with this hairstyle, eh? Yes, it's the old Bobby Chalmers syndrome, you know, you can't uh, you sort of make it flap around without actually sticking to his head, so we get a bit of movement, you know. Right. Fairly cruel. Fairly cruel, but uh, we like it. It's quite sweet. People who are interested in politics either find it very amusing or extremely offensive, and I find it amusing, actually. I mean, they are the most savage and brutal type of caricature. It takes you back to Gilray, really, doesn't it? That sort of thing. It, the one thing about Spitting Image I was deeply offended by was that when I appeared personally on the programme, uh, people couldn't see the difference. <laughs> I, I don't think that Spitting Image is as tasteless or as... Um as cruel a programme as people like to make it out. I mean, the people are rather defensive about the royal family. I suppose so. I mean, we take very much the view that the royal family in the end are, are people and in public life and very well paid to be so. And so, you know, they're fair game in the sense that any politician is fair game. But where the royal family is concerned, particularly their little children, I mean, recently they did the one of the children and they made the children look like monsters, actually. And those children are in line for the throne. And I think we've got to be very, very careful and uh, just um, bring a little bit of good taste in the programme. There seems little chance of that. The two men responsible for the spitting images themselves are former magazine cartoonists Roger Law and Peter Fluck, seen here making some dental adjustments to a well-known equestrian competitor. They progressed from static plasticine figures to the present life-size puppets, of which there are now some 200. But there are people they find difficult. Thatcher. Thatcher's very, Thatcher. difficult. It's very difficult. We don't like our Thatcher. Really? What's it? It's very good. What? See, this is, it's a very difficult problem because basically I think she has quite an ordinary face. If you saw her doing her shopping in an English market town, you wouldn't look around twice. And in fact, what, what you try to do with the caricature is to put a face on her, which is the person inside. 